Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Huffington Hensions. Um, got a special video today. I'm not really sure even what playlist this will go into, even if it will go into one. Um, but uh, I was going to review for you guys. I recently got two very awesome parts of my Toku collection, and that is the uh, Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger, um, translated to English for the first time ever, collected manga from Ishinomori himself, who, of course, uh, uh, drew, wrote and, and drew all, everything for this. Um, it ran alongside the show airing at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, it includes uh, quite a bit in it. Um, there's actually two separate like sections to it. There's a section that's for like a little bit older of kids, and then there's like a younger version, um, like a younger audience version of things as well. It's pretty cool, pretty awesome manga. I'll get to more details in a minute, but I also got this big hefty boy. Look at this thing! My goodness. So up close to you guys, the uh, official Kamen Rider Ichigo 1971 manga that ran alongside the show as well. From Ishinomori, of course, he drew all the art and wrote everything for it too. Um, first time this has been collected all in one volume um, and translated to English. I believe portions of what's in here were available on Comixology a few years ago, um, available digitally to read, but not all of it like this. Um, so again, just two really big parts, pieces of Toku history. Um, if you guys didn't know, um, <clears throat> Shotaro Ishinomori is responsible for creating essentially a lot of what's known as the tokusatsu satsu genre as it's known today. Um, technically, tokusatsu, of course, started with things like Godzilla, and it evolved things like Ultraman, and then eventually Super Sentai and Kamen Rider. Um, so he actually had created the idea for Kamen Rider first. It was based off an idea he had called um, Skull Man. That was a comic he had written for a while, manga he had written for a while. And also Cyborg 009. Always wanted to infuse elements of like a person who is was human, is converted into something else, but then they look very close to being human, but they can never consider themselves being human ever again, but still want to use those skills to fight and protect people from that ever happening to them. So that's where original Kamen Rider's idea came from. Um, so the original show ran this ran alongside it weekly as well um and then uh v3 as well and then eventually one of the seasons they were going to do a uh, writer season that had five writers in it a team of five writers and this is kind of interesting for the time because um comrade or at least most of showa usually is just mainly like one it's a very solitary show there's usually one writer not a lot of secondary writer type stuff technically in ichigo you have migo as well but i wouldn't really consider him a secondary as much as basically the other primary um, but different from Heisei, there was merely just one main writer. Um, and so they worked with the idea a little bit, and that's where they spawned the idea of Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger. Um, and that was based off of, because he wrote and did the artwork for and worked on, I think, on the anime as well, I'm pretty sure, maybe, for Cyborg 009. And that was a lot of, like, spy aesthetics, these people that were, you know, forcibly turned into robots, and they had all these different skills, and they're on a team, all that so he brought that and kind of combined those things together to create Go Ranger. Um, so he was there through production of Go Ranger as a show and Jaka. And then um, I think he fell off a little bit. And he, went, he, he took a step back a little bit because, um, let's see, I'm trying to think. So Battle Fever J came out, and I don't think he was a big part of that, but maybe a little. Um, I know that part of the reason he stepped back is because Jaka's um, ratings were kind of low, and that's why there were so few episodes of it. It's the shortest Sentai season. But anyway, speed things up here anyway. So uh, he caught the attention of Stanley. Stanley was kind of looking worldwide for the next big thing, saw how big Super Sentai was getting. He had decided to let them use some of their characters for inspirational designs for their shows, um, which lead, led into creating the Toei Spider-Man show, as we know, and also um, Miss America and Battle Fever J being a riff on Captain America. There's also hints that um, Battle Panther or Battle Kenya or whatever is supposed to be based off Black Panther and a few other of the um rangers on that team are supposed to be based off some marvel characters but they had a good partnership and the reason that stanley let them have the rights for spider spider man or, or work that deal out is because he actually had tried to get the rights to um tayo sentai sun vulcan to get that brought over as an adaptation and got laughed out of the room so it's interesting so battle fever j was the first to have a mecca i'm getting to you my point here and then um uh the fall or a few seasons later however many it was when we got denzi man denji man um that one was the first to have a vehicular um, robo, and that was influenced by the success of Supida Man, Spider-Man, the Toei Spider-Man, Japanese Spider-Man show, having Leo Pardon in it that wasn't really a full combining robot, but was similar. Because I'm pretty sure, I've not seen it, but I'm pretty sure Battle Fever J's robo, robo Battle Robo, um, I'm pretty sure Battle Fever Robo, whatever it's called, 
Um, I'm pretty sure it didn't like combine it, like a, things combining into the robot. I think Denzi Man was the first to have the combining parts. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that exactly, but it was first to have a vehicular robo. So kind of cool how they all start to like, you know, influence each other. And it's crazy to think if they wouldn't have left Stanley out of the room, if that would have been successful, would Power Rangers, as we know it, be part of the Marvel Universe? You know, that'd be, it's kind of interesting to think about and just kind of how different the multiverse would be with things like that. So anyway, getting back to this stuff right here, it's really cool part of history to have this. I mean, look at the artwork for this. It's all nicely colored with their suits and their helmets there. There's the back of it for you as well. Um, and the spine, if you guys care. The logo there is really nice and shiny there. The artwork is good. Um, clearly, it's his original artwork. You get a lot of shots. It happened again. I re-recorded this video and this happened again. Uh, pretty much anytime you open this, you get these giant like one and a half to two page spreads of his art like this. Like there are parts of dialogue and stuff too, but he was very much so what I get from reading the Go Ranger one and what I finished of the Kamen Rider one is that he's very, he was very cinematic in the way he did things. And you see that in the original Go Ranger and Kamen Rider um, series. And going forward, so, sort of too, there are some series that are a little less cinematic than others, but that has never really left the genre. They've always been very cinematic about using the effects, different kinds of shots, to give you these different feelings and emotions and, and, and reactions that they want to get out of you for that show. Um, and I love that for it. What's cool with this, I don't know for sure if the mask monsters in this um, are all original concepts or if they are... They, I didn't recognize them, but it's been a while since I watched Go Ranger all the way through. I only watched it once all the way through. Um, so I think some of the stuff in this is like original-ish. Um, like extra adventures that would happen like between the episodes of the show kind of a thing. What's weird is when you switch from the part of this in the demographic that was for the older kids and then you switch it back to like the younger kid copy that's in the back of the manga. Um... For some reason, they make uh, Mido Ninja right there. They make him really short, almost like he's a kid or something. I don't know why they did that. I don't know if that was just like a joke, a fun thing they did for the kids or something like that. I don't know, but it was just kind of odd because I don't remember him being a child. I'm pretty sure he was an adult as well. He may have been maybe the youngest on the team, but pretty sure he wasn't a kid. <laughs> so that was kind of odd. Um but it's really cool. You get the like same um, attention to detail with like the effects and the explosions and stuff like that. It's a little like with this, it's a little easier to mask the whole like, you know, kind of cut and paste uh, special effects they would do where like, you know, you could see where they cut the footage for an explosion to happen and stuff like that. This you really get a lot more of a cinematic vision of what's going on. And I really like that. You really hone in on the spy aesthetic with them. And in general, it just is it's a fun feeling reading this. It really is. Um, as far as the Colorado one, I am blown the hell away with this. First thing I want to show you, well, first I'll show this up close. There's the Kamen Rider artwork there. Really cool with Ichigo's mask there. There's the spine. There does show. Oh, I'll put it upside down. <laughs> Sorry. There is the back of it there with the uh, uh, hurricane, the, the, the bike and everything. Um, so the first, like, 15 pages of this or something like that is all in color, which I thought was really cool. Um, so it starts with this, boom, right? And it's like, oh, that's cool. It's probably just a title page, right? You thought, bitch. Ha <laughs> ha. No, it's fucking cool. It's like the first, like, 15 pages of this thing is, like, colored. And it's so cool. It's so, so cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's really fun reading this because, um, we, like, I, I put a pretty banger tweet, apparently, out there the other day about how it's crazy how we, I can technically read this manga and simultaneously have Ichigo playing on my TV right now with English subtitles at the same time. Like, that's just insanity to me. Um, and this is, if you've not watched it, Go Ranger or Kamen Rider, the original Kamen Rider, this is really easy to watch. So there's, um, you can watch it on Shot Factor TV's website. You can watch it on Tubi TV if you have that free app. You can watch it on um, Tokushatsu on Pluto TV. Um, lots of different ways to watch it. As far as Go Ranger, that's going to be more of a you know, try your luck online type of situation, but there are a lot of trusted sources. Um, only thing I'll give you a hint on, spandex. As far as a subbing group, I'll say the word spandex. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but uh, it's really cool reading this because, like, it does pretty much follow the show, and it's just as, like, dark as the original show was, which I'm, I, it still boggles my mind. Sorry, i got to get some water here. How dark the shows were able to be. 
um, especially being for like a kid, a kid show. It's different with like Reiwa era and Heisei era where like there's a lot more like, you know, goofy kid like things in it where it kind of like isn't as overshadowed by the darkness. But there is a kind of few dark things. Like there's a storyline in this with this man bat creature and he straight turns people into vampires. And if you don't save them quick enough, they just turn to dust and die. <laughs> no, like destroy the monster. They come back. No, they're done. They're absolutely murdered. Done. <laughs> Um, but it's really cool. There's again, similarly to the other one, there's you can just flip over on a page and there's a bunch of action happening, like uh yeah. Like that with Man Bat there doing some things. Um I'll try to get one with Ichigo here. I'm not prepared. Let me get some of these ones back here. These are really cool. One second here. Um trying not to lose my place also. <laughs> Let's see here. There we go. I am Common Rider. Look how big he is. He's an absolute unit. Look how thick he is. Damn. But um, it's really cool. You really get this like really good like range of motion, even though it's a manga. And it's just it's again, it's very cinematic, and you get that same dark and grittiness with it too. Um, and having watched the original show, which right now I'm actually rewatching like the tail end of it because I was kind of foggy on some of the parts. Um, it's really fun to, like, remember certain things happening here that either A, exactly happened in the show, or B, mirror certain things that happened in the show. Um, I've not finished it yet. It is 858 pages, clearly. I've, I'm not that far into it. It is, like, double or triple the size. Look at this. Look at the size comparison. Let me show you this. This is insanity. Look at that. <laughs> it's, like, double or almost, like, two and a half times the size of the Go Ranger one, which I think was because Go Ranger didn't run as long as a show as Kamen Rider did. I think that's the main reason why, or maybe the manga wasn't as successful, so they didn't, he didn't write as much. Um, another fun fact, Ishinomori has actually a world record for the most produced, um, uh, like, written and, uh, like, drawn uh, mangas by one person ever in the whole world. And it still, to this day, hasn't been beaten, I don't think. So I think that's pretty cool. Pages, I think number of pages or some, some crazy thing like that. So, these are both really, really cool. I really like both of them. I'm a big, clearly, fan of Tokusatsu. I've always been a fan of, of, of manga and anime as well. And to see it in this format, never knowing it was in this format, I think fits it really well. Because there's different things you're able to do cinematically with a show as compared to a manga where you can kind of sit and, like, stew on a certain shot. Whereas in the show, they got to get through that 23-minute, you know, toy commercial. <laughs> so, um... It, it's a lot of fun. It's really, really good. I love that it's all collected in a, you know, a nice, you know, thing here with the artwork, you know, and the hardcover is really nice. As far as availability, uh, I got the Go Ranger one as a gift, so I think you can get it off of, like, Amazon or, like, Barnes Noble. Um, you can also find them in stores. Some people have been lucky in finding them in stores. They actually were finding the Common Rider one in stores early than when it, earlier when it was supposed to be released. Um, but Amazon, for sure. I think the Go Ranger one's, like, 20... $24.99, um, and the Common Rider one is a bit more. I think it says it's $32, but I think it was less than that when I pre-ordered it. Um, but uh, they're really, really nice pieces, and I really enjoy that I have them. Um, and and they, 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 I'm sure, will display really well. I'm right in the midst of it, if you've not been following some of my videos, of uh, we're going to be selling our house soon. So uh, I won't be able to display it anytime soon right now, but once we get settled in our new house, I'm going to try and have like a set-up space for my Toku stuff. And this is definitely going to go on the shelf with all of that. So, um, if I had to give a rating, um, the Go Ranger one, I probably, mm, I'd probably give it more like a nine out of ten, only because I wish there was more. Um, and I don't understand the whole making Mido Ninja tiny thing. I thought that was weird. Unless it was just like a gimmick to like make kids want to read it more or something like that. Um, but the Ichigo Kamen Rider one, definitely a 10 out of 10. Absolutely stunning, stunning stuff. Both of them have, it's not at all commentary on the artwork or the story in, in each of these. I just want more. <laughs> I'm spoiled now that I have all of this. So uh, it's definitely worth picking up and having as part of your collection. Um, so as far as content coming up pretty soon, um, I'm going to try to keep up with Revice and Zenkaiger as we're near the end of Zenkaiger and we're getting in deep into Revice right now. Um, again, like I said before, just a few minutes ago, I am in the process of moving soon. Um, so I don't know for sure if there'll be like some blocks where I won't have a lot of content out. If that happens, I'm going to try to get some videos out that'll be like blanket reviews of a few episodes at a time. Um, they're probably going to be, although I just got a haircut, sorry, I'm like regurgitating hair. <laughs> um, uh, so I do apologize in advance. I'm going to try to get out the content as soon as I can and, you know, make sure that I'm, you know, 
uh, still giving you guys something to watch on the channel. But I do really appreciate all of you guys. We're sitting at a healthy 246 subscribers, which is a lot to me. It may not be a lot to somebody else, but it is to me, especially someone who just started this for fun. You know, I wasn't really thinking it, I didn't have really any goal set. I just wanted to do it as a way, kind of like a video diary type of thing, just somewhere to kind of regurgitate all this stuff and go on a tangent and talk about things that I love. Um, case in point, my top 10 videos recently, if you haven't watched those, check those out for Kamen Rider and Super Sentai, where I talk on, on for eons about my favorite shows. Um, but I really do thank you guys so much. I know I say that in almost every video, but I just want you guys to know how much you guys, I really appreciate you guys. Um, sharing the videos, watching, liking, commenting, if you can dislike, disliking, whatever. I really do appreciate it. The engagement is awesome. I love having being able to have this content out here. I am trying to come up with some more ideas of stuff. Um, I uh, want to do some more Toku Toy Views or some of the other stuff that I have. It'll be older stuff, but still some stuff that I have for uh, review sake. Um, and I do have kind of a partnership-y type collab idea I want to do, but I got to kind of work out the details with and if it'll happen. Um, I might have to wait, put wait on that until we're settled into our new house first and then figure that out. Um, but, uh, if you guys have some ideas of things you'd like me to review, if there's maybe some tokusatsu movies, um, some Power Rangers media, you know, something with Ryder, something with, uh, with Sentai, if there's maybe a season of Ultraman you want me to check out or a movie of Ultraman you want me to check out, anything, I I'm totally open to that. Um, yeah, and, uh, like I said, you know, these are two really great pieces of art. You know, this right here and the Kamen Rider one is really, God, God so thick. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that'll be the end of the video there. But, as always, stay hooked on Henshin's. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.